I bought new equipment. Doesn't even work. Oh, it works. It's not staying. Like that's why I never buy things from Amazon. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. I thought I'd show you how I design home, and I'm working on a really cool design for a single-family dwelling that I'm so excited about. So I just thought I'd show you how I go from absolute scratch to a floor plan that works and how all the space planning process is, what things you have to keep in consideration, such as your zoning and your circulation, your code requirements. I don't know what to say, let's just dive right into it. You will need sheets of paper. I use a black sheet because I love using a white pen, but you can use any color or just white. Markers of different thicknesses. I recommend one thick, one medium and one thin. Make sure that they are specific for architectural drawings as the ink won't bleed. A straight edge and architectural ruler. In my country, we use imperial units, but if you're working with metric, get a ruler that is in meters. Tape, pencil, eraser, markers for rendering. I use Copic and a roll of tracing paper. The first thing I do for my designs is talk to the client. I normally have questionnaire for them to fill out and sub questions are very, very specific. But for the time being, what you need to know is what rooms do they need. If you want a more advanced video about program process, let me know in the comments and I can make a video about that specifically. My client made a list of the must have rooms in the house. He didn't include some other rooms that every home should have, so I'm also going to add those. It is very important to add all the must-have rooms that the client has required. A matrix could be in form of a table or a graph and we'll show the rooms and you will indicate if you want a primary, a secondary or a distant adjacency. Primary means rooms should be right next to each other. Secondary is that it would be nice to have two rooms close to each other for convenience if possible. Distant, of course, rooms should be away from each other. Because I have done this so many times, I sometimes skip this step, but if it's your first time designing space, you should absolutely do this. We need to keep a good zoning and circulation within the house. Each room of your house is going to represent a zone. Working zones are the ones where you are performing tasks that are normally noisy. The kitchen and the laundry room are both working zones since you have a washer, a dryer, a blender and all of these appliances that create a lot of noise. Social zones is where you interact with your family and friends. Living room, dining room, TV room are all social zones. Private zones are the rooms where you rest or sleep. You want these zones to be quiet and away from the working zones. Bedrooms and bathrooms are private zones. If you have a home office, it will also likely be a private zone. Sometimes the client will have opinions on how they want their rooms laid out. But as a designer, you want to keep your working zones away from your private zones and your private zones away from your social zones. Some working zones and social zones may be close to each other, for example, the kitchen and the dining room. Buffer zones are closets and stairs, and these zones provide a buffer between the noisy and the quiet, in case you cannot locate them far apart. Some tips and exceptions for a good space planning. Powder room should be not too far from the social zones. You don't want your guests to have to walk all around the house just to get to the bathroom. But you also don't want to be sitting in the living room and looking at the bathroom door, because if it were to open, you would be looking at the toilet, and that's not a nice view. The kitchen is better close to the garage door to easily bring groceries from the car. Hallways minimum by code in North America is three feet, but if wider, better. Think about your views. Your kitchen will need a window with a view while your laundry room may not. It is worth talking to the client about this. Some clients may have specific requests, for example, have a window on the kitchen sink. Try to keep your hallways as short as you can. Long unnecessary hallways are a wasted space. You now want to get your sheet of paper and start sketching bubbles that represent all of your rooms and the way that they will be arranged in the space in relation to each other. When doing this, keep your zoning and circulation in mind, but don't think about it too much. I know this is tricky to do. First, just let your hand draw freely. This doesn't have to be perfect at all. Don't get stuck with one bubble diagram. Create as many bubble diagrams as you can. Sometimes I will do 10 to 15 bubble diagrams. The more you do, the more options you will create for the space planning of the home. And for now, the bubbles shouldn't be the same size of the rooms, but they should be proportional in relation to each other. 
a bubble for a bedroom should be bigger than one for the powder room, for example. Again, this is a freehand process, so don't worry about making it look perfect at all. I will draw arrows on the rooms that require views to make sure that they are located next to an exterior wall. You then want to color your working, social, private and buffer zones with different colors to better understand the adjacencies. The next thing I will do is draw zigzag arrows to know my adjacencies and how my rooms are interacting with one another. On this first diagram, my powder room is too far from the social zones and my laundry room is kind of in the way, so that is something that I need to fix. However, I like that my offices are next to each other and close to the powder room. My kitchen and laundry are close, but still the laundry room is bothering me in that location. I'm gonna do a second diagram now. This time, I'm gonna try to fix the problems that I encountered in my first diagram. I am liking this one, but I would rather my start to have a window view. In my third diagram, I keep almost the same layout as the second one, because I really liked it, but I am switching my stair location so that it has a window. I really like the way this turned out. My social zones are close together, as well as my working zones, and I have buffer zones separating my private from the working and the social zones. My powder room is pretty close to every other room. And I forgot to mention, this house has a basement, so I also have to relocate the stairs coming down to the basement. I will do exactly the same thing for the second level of the house. On your trace paper, trace out the home exterior walls with the actual dimensions to scale. I'm doing one quarter of an inch equals to a foot. And once you select your final bubble diagram, try to fit in all the bubbles in the real space. I know this looks nothing like a floor plan, but don't worry about it for now. Color them in to differentiate the zones, and the same for the second floor. I am thinking a little bit ahead and trying to leave some space where I'm thinking the hallways will be to enter to each room. I like to trace a dotted line as if I were walking into all the rooms. I do this to make sure there's a good access to all of them. You now want to place another trace of paper on top of your bubble diagram and try to convert your bubbles into rectangles so that they look more like actual rooms. I will color my hallways and make sure I can get to all rooms by placing a dotted line. You can now remove the bubble diagram from underneath. On top of your block diagram, you are going to start polishing your floor plan. Here's where your floor plan has to start making sense. Draw wall thicknesses, hallways, doors, and some furniture. Use your scale to make everything the right dimensions. Try not to eyeball any dimensions. Furniture doesn't have to be exactly the same size you want it, but make them in proportion to the room. I use pencils first because you will keep erasing stuff and once I'm happy with the result, I will trace it with a marker. This still looks very unfinished, but now we have a floor plan that works. 
From here, all you need to do is transfer all the floor plan into a paper. I do a thicker paper type of cardboard because I may render my floor plan with markers and I don't want the paper to break with the marker. You can either dimension everything once again on your new sheet of paper or if you're lazy like me, tape your plan on the window, tape your paper on top of it and trace the whole thing. You want to use your thick marker for the walls. You don't have to color them in black, I just like the look of it. A medium thickness for your millwork and built-in cabinets and furniture and a thin marker for your floor pattern, for your doors and for smaller accessories. Finally, you can render your plan with markers for presenting it to your client. I only did my first floor by hand for this tutorial, but after this you would transfer the whole thing into AutoCAD or whatever software you use. So that is it for today's video. I really hope that you guys blah, I really hope that you guys liked it and found it useful. I will see you on the next one. Bye.